Welcome to the official podcast of Cryptids, Anomalies, and the Paranormal Society. This is Whispers from the Dark. Um, uh, my name is Rex Nielsen. I'm the founder of uh, All Out Paranormal that I started with my two boys in 2011. Um, now it's just dad. Uh, the two of them have gone uh, their own way. Um, but the time we did have together, we had a 3,000 mile radius around Iowa, where we're from. Um, did some places that nobody else has done and, and can't to this day. Um, and it was an amazing ride with my two sons and, and being able to do this with your kids, you know, and spend the time with them was uh, just a huge blessing because, you know, all I ever wanted to be was a dad, you know, and, and got to spend that extra time with them. It's still just as fun uh, as when it first started, you know, 13 years ago. And actually this year is just, I, I told everybody I'd taken a year off because of uh, health issues and uh, but I told everybody that I would be back and I'd be bigger than ever and I, after the first of the year everything just kind of did that I own uh, Skydoor Entertainment now um, which uh, I have uh, Brandon Cooper on there Shaman Sundays uh, Katie Stafford is going to be having a show on there um, it's it's a it's an awesome network. It's all has to do with cryptic, paranormal, metaphysical, and that's what we wanted. And, and to be fun and entertaining, it's like my show is on Thursday nights. Um, discover the paranormal with all that paranormal, and it's just laid back. It's you know nothing's pressured, and just talk like we were out having a cup of coffee and uh, which has just been a blast since we started and love it and I'm here today and because Brandon is one of my best friends and we just met here about seven months ago and he wanted me to be a part of this and um, I kept telling him I said man you know I live off an extremely limited budget I said, it's just not in the cards right now. And next thing I know, he's flying me up here for the next two weeks to, to and I got to do the Paracon with you and all these amazing people. And then I got to be on the panel with you guys last night too, because it was so funny to watch people go, who's, who's that guy sitting up there? <laughs> but I, I've absolutely had a blast. I mean, um, there are people that here that I've followed for years, you know. Um, a couple of them I've just been really good friends with for a long time, like Aaron G. Thompson. I tell everybody I knew him before the G. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, we hit it off uh, years ago, and uh, we've done a lot of things together. No, I wasn't on 28 Days Haunted. Um, he keeps telling me on season eight that he'll bring me in. So, <laughs> well, you gotta gotta hold him to that at least. Then you I'm never know. I'm gonna too. I'm yeah. gonna. Um, and it's it's been fun. I mean, it's the first Paracon I've done this year. And it again, it was just one of those things that just happened. It was just meant to be, you know. And I just had a blast. And I, I hate to see it end today, but. All things have to, you know, come to an end. But then again, I, I'm with Brandon, and they're doing an eight-day investigation, and I'll be here for five of it, the investigation. So I'm really looking forward to that. So you got you got art and everything over there and stuff too. Yes, my art. It's a funny story. Um, I graduated college with three BAs in graphic design, child psychology, and elementary ed. I didn't use any of it because my ex-father-in-law told me I was too fat and too stupid to get into law enforcement. 
So I took that as a personal challenge and uh, I retired from law enforcement after 31 years in 2019. And uh, I'm glad I did it. I really am. Um, would I go back now? No, I wouldn't. Uh, it was too much of a strain on my family. You know, they were never knowing, you know, the knock on the door. And it was, it was too much on me anymore. Uh, I th think that I did a good job in the 31 years. I had done my job and I think I'd been in it long enough. You know, it started taking a toll on me. You know, when you're, you're six foot seven and 300 pounds and then you add all that weight with the Kevlar vest and now the tack vest that you wear and then you stuff even more stuff on it. It just, and, and it wasn't worth it anymore. I just didn't have the same feeling I did 31 years ago. Cause I used to jump up throw my stuff on and just out the door, you know, to crush crime and suppress evil. But as I don't want people to get the idea that I just quit caring. It wasn't that at all, because I respected what I did. I respected the people that I protected and worked for. And I would still do it today. If anything went down in here right now, I would put myself in harm's way before anybody else would get hurt in here. And, and that, I guess it'll be that way until the day I, I in a wheelchair and blind, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, the art, after, I, I quit a little over 35 years ago, I quit drawing. And, and my two boys, who are, one's 27 and the other one will be 30 next month, had no clue I could draw. So I think it was 2015, for 2016, I don't know, one day I was just sitting there and I'm going, man, I need to start drawing again. And I have no idea why. So I thought, well, why not, you know? Like I said, I, I kind of lost my faith and ability in it. And um, so it took me a while to find the medium that I, I wanted to use. You know, I tried everything, oils, pastels, you know, and nothing just wasn't working. And I, I like putting a lot of color in, in a lot of my art. But yet, you know, I wanted to be able to, where you blended it, to where it was all cohesive together, you know, to get my shading and everything else in it. But I couldn't figure out how to do it, because I liked using permanent markers, alcohol markers. So one day I'm going, well, why can't I blend it? So I got the, the watercolor brushes that you put water in them, you know, and then you do your watercolors with it. I put rubbing alcohol into those brushes and I was able to blend the alcoholic markers and I just went from there. And uh, since then, well, I've got over a thousand pieces of art. <laughs> Just pictures on my phone. Um, and, and I'm having more fun with it now than, you know, when I was in college. And, and I don't know. I, I love my life now. I don't, you know, everybody goes, oh, I wish I could be 16 again. I don't. I really don't. You know, I'll, I'll be 58 in June, and I'm just having a ball. And getting to do what you want to do. And, you know, I had so many people say retirement, oh my gosh, you know, I get so bored, yada, 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 or it sucks. No, it don't, not at all. And it's so nice just to, like this, you know, up and I'm here. I didn't need to get anybody's permission to be here. And, um, and thank you for very much for having me on. I mean, absolutely, yeah. this is awesome. It's been a long time since I've done a podcast. <laughs> I think the last one was Denise Pridemore, and I think that was three years ago. And uh, it's just, it's surreal. Uh, it, it's what a great ride it's been so far this year. Still got a lot of things coming up this year. Um, a lot more investigations are coming up. Um, and now that I have the network and stuff, I can actually go live on events so people can actually watch what we're doing at the same time we're doing it, you know, which I think is cool because people really like it. And it, we did one, and it was amazing. I mean, 
I was going to do it for an hour, and we went eight hours, you know, live, and it was it was just a lot of fun. And you know, people are saying, "Hey, did you hear that?" You know, and of course, the producer would tag if somebody would write in the comments, "Hey, we heard this or seen that." To go back and watch it and listen, you know, and there was some stuff that people actually did catch during some of the live broadcast. I could talk for hours. So, <laughs> but I, I I don't want to go dark with this, but I did have a question for you. Sure, sure. So, uh, we just got done listening to Jeremy Leonard up on stage talking right. about uh, demonology and uh, possession and, and some of the bad things that happen with that. And I wonder, from from being in the police aspect of this. You know, you, you're dealing with these kinds of people in that. Right. And have you seen or had to deal with anything that you would consider, you know, something along those lines? As, as far as professionally or what I do now? Uh, professionally from the police aspect, you know, um, like, because, you know, you guys are out there dealing with all these bad situations. And sometimes, you know, like, you know, we know that people that end up going down that route, it gets worse and worse because if they do open themselves up to these things, you know, it, it can enter and just take control, and it just is a spiral. So, And you're right. Uh, there had been, a, I mean, over the 31 years, I dealt with a lot of different aspects and things and individuals and situations. But, yeah, probably a handful of times, you know, you you realize when you're dealing with it going, this just isn't because he's they're drunk or high. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a much deeper underlining problem. And it... You know, being what you believe in, you know, in which I've been in the paranormal. Um, I had my first experience when I was four, and I, I've I've been doing something in it or following it um, ever since then. But you know, you had to separate yourself. You know, when you had that uniform on and that badge, I just can't say, yeah, this guy has, you know. A uh, dark figure that's attached itself to him. You know, I can't put that in my report, but yes, uh, absolutely, I did have to deal with stuff like that. So, well, I mean, I don't want details and stuff like that, but like, how do you handle that? Do you do you recommend like psychiatric psychiatric help? Do you you know, do you provide that stuff for him, or what what can you do as a in that position? When stuff like that arose and it was legitimate to where that something needed to be done before they hurt themselves or, or others whether they be high drunk or um, have an attachment yes I would always you know in my report say this individual can would be beneficial if uh, we took them and had them you know uh, into a psychiatric evaluation for the next 72 hours at least. Um, try to get a hold of, you know, get the blood work and stuff done up to see what all is is, is happening. But yeah, I always tried to do that. Did it always get happen? No, because it, it wasn't my call, unfortunately. You know, it was 99.9% of the time it was, it was a judge's call. A lot of times, yeah, the judge agreed with me, especially the longer I, I did the job. They respected how I handled myself, and, and they knew if, if I wrote something up like that, that this person, this would be beneficial for them, instead of just stuffing them in a jail cell and just watching them just deteriorate and just destroy the whole surroundings and make it hard for everybody. So I hope that answered your question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when when you have some of those cases, like well, well, let's back up a little bit there. When you um, you're dealing with all this stuff, you said that you had an experience early on. So when you're you're as a police officer active, you had the mindset of that this stuff was out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And it was. It it, it should be surprised. When I, you know, started doing this and getting out there and and learning the job and getting my experience, how it played a bigger part than than you really would ever think it would. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, I could tell other people about it. You know what I'm going to get. You know, oh yeah, right. You know what's wrong with you? You know, and do little 
you know, do you keep in contact with your mothership, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, so? <laughs> um, yeah, I wish, I, I did push for many years to have somebody like from a psych ward that was readily available. So if stuff like this come up when you knew that it was much more than just a drug or alcohol, that you could get um, placement or help quicker for them. And towards the end of my career, it started happening. A lot of um, sheriff's departments did have uh, a psychologist readily available to help with that. And a lot of them have them on staff now. So I guess I did something right over the years, but I did. Um, like I said, throwing them in with everybody else is not going to help. Not at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was going to ask you that, how you've seen that, the the progression over time in your, your time with the police force that has changed, you know, the, the stigmatism or whatever, of that has, has that's kind of gone away or changed or at least gotten a little bit better? It's gotten a little bit better. Um, you know, you still have to walk on pins and needles because it... Unfortunately, there's politics and everything, so you gotta you gotta watch what you say and do, even though you're doing the right thing, and ever there's people around you that know you're doing the right thing. That doesn't mean that the higher up think that you're doing the right thing, and it doesn't take much for them to go. And then you know your career is absolutely shot. You know, nobody's gonna hire you as an officer anywhere. You know, and uh, way too many people I know put too much into it just to have it, you know, the rug yanked out from underneath you, you know, and it, it's tough to make that transition after you retire from a job where you ran towards danger every single day and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore you know because you never knew what your day was going to bring whether it be good bad or indifferent um, I've at first it really I, I kind of got off the subject I'm sorry <laughs> whatever um, go ahead it, it, at first I was it really didn't bother me but the longer I've been away from it which you know having the the, the network and being able to do the shows and stuff like that fills all that, that void mm -hmm. But um, Sacred Mountain Retreat, which some of the proceeds and stuff from this are going for that. And it's an amazing place. Everybody check it out. It's not just for veterans. It's also for police officers, uh, deputy sheriffs, firefighters, EMTs. And I didn't know there was anything like that for an officer because most officers after they retire three to five years before they commit suicide from it and it's a high rate so it's just like doing the job an officer is killed in the line of duty every 54 hours you know I've lost many amazing friends over the years and the last one I lost was somebody that I was incredibly close to for over 20 years one of the greatest officers ever and nobody would argue that fact and he saved everybody by putting he knew he was going to die but he knew he was everybody else was going to be safe i'll never forget the phone call you know two o'clock in the morning i'll try i was like no you're lying he's not gone J come on, this isn't even funny, and it, to this day, I mean, on my motorcycle, I had uh, his badge with the black band put over it, uh, ISP 462, and what was amazing is that there was over 20,000 officers from every state in the United States that came to his funeral. I mean, the proceed of, of sheriff's departments and police cars from all over was just incredible. Unfortunately, I couldn't be go to any of it. Uh, my mother um, had uh, Alzheimer's, so I was retired. 
she lived with my mother, so my my sister. So when my sister went to work during the day, I took care of mom. And, um, I would have loved to have been part of it, but it's. I just. Glad that I mean the people that I I know now that hopefully nothing ever happens to them. And uh, I, I thank the God every day that nothing ever happened to me. You know, there were situations where I come close a few times, but you know, I'm still here, still breathing, and and being able to tell this story and and go on and shed some light. I mean, you know, you have good and bad with everybody. It doesn't matter what you do. There's always good and bad, but we're not all bad. You know, um, you can take it or leave it. I never, I never abused my authority. I, I never went, oh, because I've, I've got this badge and a gun that I can do anything I want. I can count on one hand how many times I ever had to unholster my weapon, too. Because talking, you'd be surprised how easily you can talk somebody down out of a situation instead of standing there and, and trying to be BMOC, big man on campus and, you know, puff your chest out. So, anyway. <laughs> so, have you have you ever had any of the cases, like we were talking about the people that, you know, have gone down that bad path and stuff, have you ever had anyone come back after, you know, you'd, you'd gotten them help and stuff and, and thanked you? Yes, absolutely. Um, and there's a couple times um, that... There was people that, you know, I helped, but they still ended up going to prison. I would get letters from them, thanking them for the help that they got before they went to prison. <clears throat> and then after they got out, they would look me up and thank me. I couldn't ask for anything better because I guess I did make a difference, you know, and that's all I ever wanted to do. I didn't want to. I didn't do it because I got to put a uniform on and a metal badge and wear a gun. That's not what it was, not, not what it's about. And I, I have the letters still, a lot of them I still um, correspond with or keep in touch with. And it's pretty cool every once in a while I'll be somewhere and so somebody will walk up and go, hey, I, said, I know who you are, you know, and I'll get a hug from somebody saying thank you so much for, you know, you know, start beating my ass and let me know that there is a, there can be a difference. There is help, and there are people besides me out there that do care and, and want to see people succeed and not have to go through the, what we had to see and deal with every single day. It, it's it's a tough thing to see, and it's you know, and you're not a human being if it doesn't affect you in, in some way, shape, or form. Because um, it was, there was days it was real tough to to come home and and try to just go on with the horrors that you've seen during the day. But I, I think I made a difference, um, and I, I'm proud of what I did. I, I'm not ashamed of anything I ever did. And I know I know some people are going, oh yeah, yeah, and that's fine. You know. For one thing, nobody, they don't know me, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool that you brought all that up because I've never had anybody bring that side of it in before, which, which is cool because I'm usually answering the same questions all the time. And I like, thank you very much. Cause those, those are awesome questions that you've asked. Whenever I have people on my, my shows, either of them, the cryptids or this one, I try and listen to some of their other stuff. And I go, yeah, okay, you've talked about that enough. What else can I talk about? Because there's, there's so much more to, you know, we, I was actually interviewing um, Aaron yesterday. And, um, you know, we, we got on all this other stuff. And I said, you know, everyone looks at you that you were on TV and that's who you are. But there's so much more to these people and so much more, you know, like, um, I don't know, you know who Ronnie LeBlanc is? Yes. Okay, Ronnie LeBlanc, Expedition Bigfoot. Yeah. I had him on my show and we didn't even talk about Expedition Bigfoot. Because there is so much more. I mean, he's more paranormal than even Bigfoot. Right. And nobody knows any of this stuff, you know? So you gotta, I, I, 
I do the show not because, you know, we, we want to have a show or whatever, because it gives me a chance to interview the people that I want to talk to. Exactly. And, and if anybody listens to it, great. If nobody listens to it, I don't care because I still get to have those conversations yes. with my guests. So I, I appreciate the time with you, you know, and, and getting to know you. And I'm glad you called me over there and <laughs> introduced yourself in that because, you know, I, I've never heard of you. you know, yeah, I'm, and that was the whole thing, you know. It was so funny. <laughs> I'm up on the panel with uh, everybody knows who's up there, and then you know here's this giant of a man sitting, <laughs> you know, amongst everybody, and everybody's like, you know, and I get the mic, and they're like, you can see the expression on the pe- faces out there, like, who is this guy? Yeah, you know, and hopefully, you know, um, having you come over and, and, and finding out who I am, and and I tried to tell everybody that has stopped, you know. I've, I've worked hard at it. The paranormal community is an amazing thing. Um, I love doing it. I love being able to come out and, and, and be with people that, you know, I've, I've watched for years. I've read their books, watched them on TV, their documentaries, and so on and so forth. And every time this happens, I, I get to be like, be on the panel yesterday which it was such an honor and a blessing to be up there uh, with you and everybody else I mean I just it was great I'm nobody either (laughs) I was I was thinking about the same as you going well I'm a speaker but I don't belong up here either I mean uh, the first panel I actually did I was sitting up uh, at a VIP dinner so, you know, you think it's it's rough being up there with these, you know, like Aaron and Jeremy and Katie and stuff. That's nothing. <laughs> I was a, a guest speaker uh, at a VIP dinner. People paid to have dinner with us. And they put me up there with, uh, let's see, um, Brian Cano and uh, Dave Schrader and Patty Negri and... Um, I can't even think of who else was there. Uh, Jeremy Leonard, that's where I met Jeremy. <laughs> and uh, Jeremy came over to me. Uh, we got let off the panel first, and uh, he was the first one that comes over. So you hunt cryptids? <laughs> I saw a Rougarou. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't know who you are. Why are you talking to me? But yeah, so that was that was pretty intense. Like I did not belong up there, and uh, it was really cool because they all they all treated you like you do. You know, exactly. there's a reason that you're here speaking. There's a reason that somebody wants to hear you, and you know. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's like um, I got to meet the Booth brothers, Christopher mm-hmm. and his brother. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Christopher and I became really, really good friends, and we still are to this day, you know, and uh, another surreal thing. You know, all the stuff that he's done on um, Sci-Fi Network mm-hmm. and uh, the movies. I've actually got some of the props mm-hmm. from some of the movies that he's done. He's actually got my artwork hanging in his home. Which is even cool. I, I did a few paracons with him, and, and I always find out if he's going to be at the same paracon. I asked to be next to him, nice. and um, it was funny. I did one here two or three years ago, and uh, it had been a really long day. It'd been like a sixteen-hour day, and I hadn't eaten all day, you know. And of course, everybody gets together after uh, it shuts down for the day, and. I'm not a drinker, Mm -hmm. and I go so far until I see, okay, you guys are having way too much fun that you shouldn't be. So I I left, and the only place that was open at the time was Walmart. So I went across (laughs) the street, you know, so I got a sub sandwich and and some food. I went through the self-checkout. Well, I set my phone and my wall up on the self-checkout, and I left it there and forgot. So I get back to my room. And I'm like, where's my son at? So I'm looking for my phone to call him. And I'm like, what in God's name? You know, where's, where's my phone? And then I'm going, where in the heck's my wallet? So I'm going, oh, my gosh, you know, did I drop it? So I run back out my vehicle, and I, I, I'm, like, walking across this six lane trying to see if I dropped my phone or, you know, something. So I finally went back to, to Walmart, and, and I went in, and I found security, well, I went in and I found who was in charge, and I said, I need to talk to security, and who are you? Well, I got my badge and stuff out, and I said, well, I'm pretty sure I left my wallet and my phone on this checkout station right here. You know, and of course, there's cameras over every single one of the checkout. And I said, I need to talk, see them now, and I need to see this. This is how long ago I was in here. So 
um, they take me back there. I met with security, and uh, sure enough, there was a couple behind me, and they seen me leave it, and they left their stuff in their cart, and they went over and they took my wallet and phone, followed me out of Walmart. It looked like they were going to give it back to me. No, as soon as we got outside, they peeled off and went down the complete opposite end and went and got in their car. Well, of course, it was all on camera as well. So um, that's when I called the police department, and um, I, of course, I canceled all my cards and everything to make sure that nothing was going to be used. They couldn't get in my phone if they wanted to. So... Um, uh, I had like four officers end up showing up. And so me and the sergeant decided to go in the parking lot down where uh, my, they had gotten in the car. Got down there, and sure enough, I ended up stepping on something, and it was my wallet. And, and they took my driver's license. Why? I mean, it's not going to do them any good whatsoever, but they took my driver's license, which I really thought was kind of a strange thing. You know, and I had quite a bit of cash in there, and... Uh, they took all my cash that was out of there. They took the one credit card I used when I travel and, of course, my debit card. Um, and then the other officer that was out driving around found my phone. They had tried to get into it so many times it locked itself and they, they chucked it. Well, it landed in the medium and the grass. Because when he went by, he could see that it was lit up. There was something lit up there and he stopped and there was my phone. So it wasn't... 30 minutes later, I get back to my hotel room and the officers show up. The people that had stolen my credit cards and stuff were trying to use them at Walmart, where they just took the stuff from. <laughs> Did I get my money back? No, I didn't. Um, but it was funny, they were, they were trying to use my stuff at the same place. Not, it, not even two hours after this had all transpired, they were trying to use it and, and it was so funny. <laughs> but. The, the story with that, um, everybody knew that what had happened to me the night before that because I had no cash, I had nothing. And I, we, I had another three days. And I was just sweating bullets. I didn't know what to do. So, because my bank account got frozen, mm -hmm. everything. So, I, I'm standing there and I'm actually selling stuff. So, I'm making a, a, a little money. Well, Christopher St. Booth comes over and he goes, in his British accent, watch out, I need to give him, he comes over and he goes, I need to give the big man a hug. So he's giving me a hug and he goes, I got your wallet. <laughs> and he goes, is that too soon? <laughs> I was just laughing. I just thought it was funnier and I'll get out. And he ended up, he ended up helping me out and, um, and it was cool. There was um, uh, Keith Ainge, um, he helped me out and there was a, there was a couple other people there. Um, uh, Mike Rethsecker, mm -hmm. um, good friend of mine as well, he helped out too. So it, it, it was cool because I was really sweating going, how am I going to make three, you know, three more days? Luckily, the room and everything was paid for. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had no money for food, no money for gas to get anywhere. But it worked out. It was, it was a good deal. But that's what the story was with Christopher St. Booth. It was so funny. <laughs> uh, I took your wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, um, you know, they always say, like, you shouldn't meet your heroes and stuff like that. But, you know, this is one of the fields where a lot of the people that, you know, you look up to and stuff, like, as far as, like, cryptids and stuff goes, like, almost everybody in the cryptid field that I've met and, you know, like, looked up to or whatever is all, like, friends on my Facebook now. Exactly. You know, I've had them all on my show, you know, and, you know, every everybody's been super cool. I've only had... Like two people turned me down. One of them said they don't do any podcasts because they're like afraid of them. They they just don't like the anxiety of doing it. Right. And the other one just um, never got back to me or forgot, you know. And and that's it. But everybody else, so awesome people out there. Yeah, exactly. And every time I go, you know, I I I, I know the people that are going to be there, and then it just branches off from there. Mm -hmm. You know, I meet people that they know, and then I meet mm -hmm. the people that they know, and it branches off more. And so, you know, my list just keeps getting bigger of people that, you know, and I've had nobody turn me down so far, which is so cool. I mean, send it out and it, absolutely, when do you want me to be on the show, mm -hmm. you know? Um, because, you know, Daniel Klaus, who owns um, uh, the Hinsdale House in New York, okay. one of my best friends, uh, amazing man. Um, 
he was one of the first people I'd ever met. Um, I haven't been out to Hinsdale yet. I will get there. I will get there. <laughs> and uh, he could just tell me, you better. And I sent him the, the article. Oh, by the way, I'm in a magazine. Um, uh, if, if anybody would like to, to see my story and how I started with my two boys and some of the stuff that we accomplished over the years that we were together, uh, American Paranormal Magazine, you can go to the website. Uh, we are on the cover, All Out Paranormal, and there's a three-page write-up. And if you read it, leave a comment. I want to know how well I wrote it. <laughs> I didn't think I did a bad job on it, but I would like to hear other people, you know, say, hey, you know, it was good or wow, and you got a little wordy or something like that. But I hope you enjoy it. If you do, uh, you know, um, read it. And if you want the magazine, um, they're a nonprofit organization, just like my Skydoor Entertainment. Uh, it's $13 for the magazine. And, um, and if you want, I send it to me and I'll sign it and I'll send it right back to you if you want it. And, I mean, if you want that done. Um, but um, where'd we go from this? I kind of <laughs> walked away from what we were talking about. Oh, man, that's no problem, man. Tell, tell everybody, you know, like, where can they find you? Where, you know, you talked about the magazine. Um, where can we get your art online? Okay. And uh, t- tell me about your... your um, your network and stuff and, and how people can get a hold of that and listen to that. Absolutely. Uh, my art, I call it unexplainable art. Um, I should promote it more than I do. Um, we all should do that. Yeah. I, I just have a Facebook page and you'll see a picture of me. I, 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 I'm a bald guy, <laughs> tattoos on his arms. I think I'm leaning on a chair and I'm wearing a black shirt and I got tattoos all over my arms. Um, it's unexplainable art for a reason. I don't have a big epiphany when I, when I do a drawing. It just, it just happens. I, I can see something that'll trigger going, wow, you know, a pattern or something, and go, wow, I can make a really cool picture out of that. And that's why I carry my little notebook around and, and, and write things down. And another thing I do, which people kind of get upset with it, I'll see a picture going, wow, that could be so much better if this, this, or this mm-hmm. is done to it. And I've done that. I, I've seen a picture and I've changed it completely and made it my own. And, um, or my original stuff. Or if somebody wants something, just you know, go to my unexplainable art page. Say, hey, because the phone number that's on there is my personal cell phone. You want something, uh, just call me. If I don't answer, please leave a message because I will call you right back. I'm like most people. If I don't know the number, I don't answer it. But if you guys don't leave a message... You know, I can't get back to you. The email address is my personal email address. And um, tell me what you want. You know, uh, look at my stuff. It's, it's different. I think I do something uh, that appeals to everybody at some point. Um, there's a lot of people that don't care for it, which is fine. You know, uh, I can take constructive criticism. And, um, but that's where you can find it. And if you find something on there, I, I quit putting on there sold. Because, you know, having three Facebook pages and, and running um, the network now, I just don't have time to be running in there going, oh, this one's sold, and then scrolling through everything, mm-hmm. finding that and putting sold on it. If there's something you, anybody finds on my page, and I will be putting new stuff up. I haven't put new stuff up in a while. Been, been doing artwork. I just haven't had time to be uploading and putting it on there. Um, I'll let you know whether it's, I still have it or not. Now, the unfortunate thing is I'm not an artist that does a picture over and over and over again. I don't want to be that person. But under extreme circumstances, like there was a young lady that really fell in love. Um, I did um, my rendition of the Sistine Chapel where they're getting Mm -hmm. ready to touch uh, fingers. Really very modern and and way out there. But you know what it is when you Mm -hmm. see it. She absolutely fell in love with it, and I kept saying, well, I'm sorry, hon, I, I sold that years ago. And I could see that she really wanted it. So I, they walked away, and I went and found the mom and dad, and I said, I- I'll do it for her. I, I will redo the picture for her. And um, I-, I could not believe the phone call I got after she ended up getting it. And But I have done it. I mean, if there's something that you absolutely go, man, I've, I've looked for something like this for so long, would you do it for me? I, I will. It won't look exactly the same, 
there'll be some a little bit different in it, not to where it changes the whole aspect or the meaning of the picture, but the, it, it won't be identical, put it that way. Mm-hmm. It's not like me doing a print, right. you know. So that's where you can find that. Um, and, and by all means, a lot of stuff, I, I draw tattoos for people. Hmm. I just did one for my doctor before I came here, <laughs> as a matter of fact. And uh, it was so funny. I did it, and it was, I can't remember what flower it was, but he wanted it to wrap, finish up the upper part of his arm. And it, it was a flower that he must be a, a, a pet name or nickname for his daughter. And he goes, but make the flower look manly. <laughs> You know, and, and if anybody's listening, it's you make a, man, a flower manly. You got to put some thought behind it. What I did is I actually made the the, the outline a bit thicker and, and um, heavier mm-hmm. and uh, more distinct, not flowing like a regular flower would look. And then I had to put a purple apple in it somewhere and the number twenty. And let me tell you, I mean, the purple apple, you really have to look for it because he didn't want to be where. You could see it. You know, when you looked at the tattoo, there it was. There was the purple apple or the 20. And it was funny because when I got it done, I sent him the picture of it done. And he goes, well, where's the apple and the 20? And I said, well, you told me to put it in there where you really had to look. And so I ended up um, drawing a circle around it and sent the picture uh, back to him saying, there's the apple and, 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 <laughs> and there's the 20. And it was awesome. He came to my house to get it, and I don't like uh, when I make stuff for friends and family and stuff. It's you know how much do you want? And unfortunately, I had to raise prices because the price of paper and art supplies now is just through the roof. You know, I used to walk into Hobby Lobby and you know go down the because I if I do it on paper. It's it's 180 pound or higher, hot press or cold press. Um, watercolor paper it's sturdier i can i can get more out of it more blending or if i'm doing the pointillism works a lot better or i do it on a canvas panel but i go to hobby lobby now and i'm lucky if there's 20 drawing pads on there and they've almost doubled and tripled and i you know go in there and pay 18 dollars for you know 12 sheets of, of watercolor paper when i used to get 25 you know, for less than that, mm-hmm. I did had to um, um, raise prices. Um, I will frame them if they want framed. I don't charge anything when I, I uh, send them to them. I don't charge postage. Um, but it was funny. Uh, I said, "Well, man, Doctor House, and that's really his name, Doctor House. <laughs> He's an awesome guy." Um, I, I said, "Man, I, I don't know what to. You know, I hate doing this." And he goes, put it this way, you tell me what you would ask for it, and I'll tell you whether it's enough or not. And I'm going, okay, so I just went, okay, it's $100. He goes, no, it's not, it's 200 And he hands me $200 for the artwork. And I'm going, are you serious? He goes, you gotta realize, he goes, everybody has something that everybody needs. He goes, I can't draw. Mm-hmm. But luckily I know you, and you did exactly what I wanted that's going to be permanently on my body. And I, and I never really thought of that before. I'm like, well, you're a doctor. I'm not, you know. And it was really cool to, to have your doctor, you know, come to your house and, and to get his artwork to begin with and then hand me twice as much as I was asking for. So, again, I, I'm, I'm not outrageous on prices, um, but... I, I think, you know, I'd like to tell her, but I'm not famous by any means. I mean, after I'm dead, then they'll be worth money, like most of them. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but uh, I really put my heart and soul into what people want, mm-hmm. and uh, even the stuff that I draw for whatever reason, uh, I, I think I do a darn good job at it, and um, I do make money at it. I'm never going to be able to live off of what I do. Um, but in the last year, it's really picked up. And um, people are really appreciating it, and, which means more to me than anything. Especially when I get a picture saying, look, at, we just hung this in our living room, you know. And I'm like, that is so cool. You know, I got to, it's, I don't know. 
I don't know, 75, maybe 100 people who've sent me saying, hey, like the one guy had his bat cave, and I'd done some Batman stuff, and he had to show me where he'd put it up in his bat cave, and and that just means the world to me when and people are proud enough that they actually hang it up and go, hey, you know, I know this guy, and this is his artwork, and it comes around, you know, mm-hmm. hey, my friend said, you did this for him, can you do this, so... I could go on about that forever and a day too, <laughs> but that's it. It's just as simple as that. Um, even you can go to my 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 public page, just Rex Nielsen, and say, "Hey, you know, I, I heard you on on here, or I, I seen you somewhere, or a friend has art. I didn't know what to look up for your art page. Hey, can you do this for me? Which is great, absolutely. Or go out to All Out Paranormal, which is another page of mine." And you can do the same thing there, too. But, you know, like my page and follow, too, please. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And that's where you can find me. And as far as my network, everything that's on it is paranormal, cryptic, um, um, cryptid, you know what I mean, Bigfoot, mm-hmm. all that yeah. stuff. Which you know, I'm, like I'm telling you like you don't know what I'm uh, talking <laughs> about when I'm the one that I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, metaphysical. Um, and it, it's fun because it's, it's a network where that's the stuff that if you're into, that's where you're going to find it. Mm-hmm. And, um, I got some amazing people on there. I've got amazing people coming up. that are going to have shows on there and, and it, it's a lot of fun and it is audio and video. Okay. So you'll get to see us as we're interacting and having fun and we do have fun. A lot of times we get off subject completely, <laughs> especially if I, I can't have Brand, imagine. <laughs> if I have Brandon on or uh, Nick, um, uh, Aaron G's sidekick. <laughs> oh. Aaron, I, I, um, Aaron and I are just uh, uh, Nick and I are, are really close too. I we have a lot of fun, and I just had him on the show here. Uh, I don't know about a month ago. We didn't talk about anything paranormal. <laughs> Partly. <laughs> just about Come some, listen to this paranormal show about nothing about paranormal. It, and it was <laughs> just some of the stuff that we did when we were doing the uh, on investigation or something. Um, but yeah, it's that's what my show's about. Uh, a lot of it is is very informative, very to the point, and a lot of different subjects. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max Hawthorne is on our show. Um, he's an award-winning uh, author. Um, he he's awesome. He's on there uh, on Tuesday nights. I'm trying to think. Uh, we have an amazing medium that's on uh, Wednesday nights, and don't everybody flood me with nasty emails or anything. There are very few that you can really put any. Um, I don't want to say faith or, or, or what they're doing. And she's the real deal. I gave her the most cryptic thing in the world. Um, there was no way she could have gotten this unless she has a gift. I never used a name, never said who it was, never said that this person was famous, nothing. and. I cried. It was one of my first shows on the new network, and I cried because she knew exactly. I mean, before I even finished, she told me who it was. And it was Freddie Mercury, everybody. I'm the hugest Queen fan on the face of the earth. I guess I do have tattoos <laughs> of, of Freddie Mercury and Queen. And um, it, it, she knew exactly what I was talking about. And I, from there on, I was like, she did a reading, long distance readings for people and everybody, we had people from Australia and stuff asking questions and she was getting everything. An, an amazing lady. An and who amazing, is she? Uh, Melissa. Oh, now her last name. Her, her <laughs> you last can talk name about her all day, me. but nobody cares yeah. if you don't tell her name. <laughs> her name is Melissa and... Um, Oh, I'm trying to. We've they've got some of the coolest names. I, bear with me, everybody. I'll look <laughs> it up here. Yeah, I'm owner, producer, and host of of my own network, and I, I I've got so many shows I can't remember everybody's I, names. Don't feel bad. I mean, I have I have guests on 
live every Monday on my show, and uh, I'm talking to the the guests, you know, like you, and I'm like, yeah, last week I was talking to, oh crap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, give me a minute. No, nope. no, it's not coming. Uh, go back and listen to last week's episode. It was on there. <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> soul connection. Um, soul connection. Yeah, soul connection on Wednesday nights um, uh, from, I believe, 7 to 8. Okay. I believe her show is just an hour. Give it a watch. I mean, you can watch mine too. Where can we watch it? You can watch it on Skydoor Network. Okay. Um, it, sorry, I changed it from network to entertainment because I, I liked it better. <laughs> Um, uh, we have a Facebook page. We are on everything. Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, I mean, YouTube, Facebook. It goes out to everything. Every single show that we have goes to those platforms. And since we started it, and I'm not bragging or anything, my show has reached 32,000 people a week. Wow. You know, and like we talked earlier, I'm nobody, you know, but... I've met some amazing people, and, and, and everybody loves the program. And Brandon, the people that you know watch his show, um, Max Hawthorne, he's got the biggest following on uh, YouTube. And uh, Melissa's gotten quite a following. She's the real deal, people, and it's an amazing lady. And her husband sits in with her, and he's a card, man. That man's funny. <laughs> And I'm glad he does a part of the show because I, I do jump in. I produce the shows, and uh, so I'm behind the scenes to help mm-hmm. with the comments that come in. And I am trying to change it up so people can actually call in during mm-hmm. the shows, which would be really cool to hear from the people themselves because we get so many stuff typing in. You know, you're trying to starve the ones that you haven't, you know, because we don't, if we miss people, it's not intentional. It really isn't. And there's times you want to, you know, people say, hey, Rex, hi, guys. Don't take it personal if we don't say hey back or hello, because I don't want to interrupt the guest mm-hmm. that's going on. But I, when I do get a chance, I'll say, hey, I want to catch up and say hi to such and such, so and so and so and so, and these two questions. But yeah, we're trying to get it so actually people can call in. And cool. I, I think that'll be a really cool uh, thing to do, to do. But that's where you can find us. Um, any one of the shows that are on, you can find them. Go to their Facebook page, too, which you can go to just Skydoor Entertainment, and it gives you the list when the shows are. Uh, you can even put on there to get notifications. When one of the shows is coming up that you want to follow and watch, it'll give you a notification. Hey, you have an event that's going to be happening tonight. And uh, I... I guarantee that you're going to, take care, man. you bet, um, that there's something for everybody. Mm-hmm. There really is something for everybody on it, and uh, I'm blessed. And the two guys that I bought it with, it's fun. It, and I think it's cool that it's everything that everybody's here right now that does. It's all in one, one spot. And uh, we'll be getting more. We have people contacting us all the time. And we've had some amazing guests on there. I, and Brandon, he has some really special people on there, too. So that's where you can find us. Awesome. And I <laughs> guarantee everybody, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, give, us, you know, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Give us a star rating. Because when we do that, we're trying to get sponsorship to help us keep going. Mm-hmm. Because we're a nonprofit, we're, we don't make any money at doing this. We just want to bring this to everybody, and and, and have a network, paranormal, um, cryptic, cryptid, cryptid. That's cryptic. You duh, put that in, you start looking cook. for currencies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now I'll never screw it up again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and the metaphysical. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got healers. Can you get a card for us? Real um, quick? All that stuff on there. And uh, and if you go, we do, I finally have a website up and running. So if you go to our website, um, skydoorentertainment.gov, uh, um, you know, it's so new. I'm not sure. But if you, if you <laughs> Send go me to, the links. I will put them in the show notes, uh, whatever see. you got. 
I know it's on here somewhere. It was one of the, there. Um, Skydoorentertainment.org. Dot org. Yes. Right. Um, we just got that up and running, and I've actually made an, an author page on there. So everybody that's on our shows, mm-hmm. you can click on that author, and it'll show you exactly where to get their books. Very cool. And um, I, I'd please do, because I, I've, I've got some really cool people coming up, and their books are absolutely phenomenal. And uh, because I'm going to be, um, what's it, Lena? Lynn? Lynn. That's it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Faces, yes. Names, no. By the third day, we're all a little tired yeah. here. <laughs> I can't wait to have her on mm-hmm. uh, my show. Um, the Horns are going to be on there. Um, actually, I already have them booked. April 20th, they'll be on um, uh, Discover the Paranormal with All Out Paranormal. Um, KD and KT are both, uh, they'll be on my show here pretty <laughs> soon. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Chris Lewis. Um, if you don't know who this guy is, he's written some of the coolest books on um, like uh, myths and legends, but he's written stuff, you know, like the Swamp Ape and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, just a ton of books and an awesome guy. Really awesome guy. Finally, you know, we're, we're really good friends, and I finally tied him down. He'll be on my show in May, and uh, he's got a couple new books out. And uh, I, uh, when I get him on our page, I mean, he's got a whole library. He's got a lot of books, and he does a lot of forwards for a lot of other people and their books. Uh, my son wrote a book, Chris Nielsen. Um, he'll be on there as well. I'm in the first five chapters. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, He did it, not just because he's my son, it's written very, very well. Um, He's extremely articulate and an amazing young man. Um, And so is my youngest one. He just doesn't do what older brother and dad do. Uh, Marches to a different drummer. That's Um, okay. And he's taller than his dad. Yeah. Yeah. You're I'm, not a small man no, either. So I, I walk around at six foot seven and yeah. then I've got my son who, you know, I outweigh by a hundred and probably 30, 40 pounds. And he's, you know, big around as my thumb and can out eat this entire, everybody in here at one <laughs> sitting. <laughs> yeah. He's six, eight. Um, but we do a lot of things. Our RC cars is one big thing that we love to do together. And, and, um, that's, that's the network. And, you know, check it out, please. Awesome. Tell us what you think. Awesome. Well, I tell you what, after we get done here, I'm going to have you send a friend request or we'll friend request each other. And Absolutely. send me the links for all that and we'll get it in the show notes because that's a lot for me to remember, too. <laughs> <laughs> for me, too. I just, I, you know, like I said, this is the first podcast I've done in, in so long. And I, good thing you're asking this stuff because, you know, as soon as I sat down, my brain went, you know, a hundred different directions <laughs> at once. <laughs> You know, awesome, I, I had many bald moments during this this interview, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate meeting you. I and mean, you're absolutely an amazing guy. And thank, thank you, you for your service as well. Oh, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that. Yeah. I can count on one hand how many times I heard that in my career. But thank you very much. Yeah. And thank you for having me on. I, I'm honored. Yeah, uh, no problem. <laughs> it was an absolute blast meeting you. You're a great guy. Oh, thank um, you. This was a lot of fun. You want me back again? Absolutely. All you do is just let me know, and I'll be right there. Awesome. I will let you know, man. (laughs) All righty. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Whispers from the Dark. To find out more about cryptids, anomalies, and the Paranormal Society, visit us at our website at wisconsincaps.com. That's wisconsincaps.com. There you can find links to all of our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and our Patreon. You will see links to our online store as well, where you can get t-shirts, DVDs, and more. If you click on the public events page, you can find out where you can meet us in person and all the public events we have coming up. If you enjoy our podcasts or our YouTube shows, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Wisconsin Caps. 
There you can find behind the scenes pictures and videos from all of our media, as well as bonus footage and evidence that we have collected. If you have encountered something you can't explain, we want to hear from you. Visit our website and click on Submit a Report on our main screen. You can choose to leave your contact information or simply remain anonymous. You can also reach us via email at wisconsincaps at gmail.com. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please contact us on our Whispers from the Dark podcast page on Facebook or send us an email at wisconsincaps.com. Remember to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen or watch or find us.